Welcome game design students. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a teleportation platform. And I'm sure there are other ways to do this, but the thing I like about this one is that you can place this arrow here where you want your character to teleport and also rotate it to determine which way he's going to face. So when I step on this platform here, I'm going to be teleported up to the top of this box facing towards the camera. So let's see what that looks like. Here I am. And there I am. And I just got knocked off by the um, rotating hazard thing there. So let's get started. I'm going to create a new blueprint actor by right clicking in my content browser folder. Make sure you're at the root level. And I'm going to create a new blueprint class and it's going to be an actor. And then I'm going to name this one Teleport 02 because I already have one in there. And then I'm going to double click it. And that brings up the component editor. So now what I'm going to do is dock this right here so I can switch back and forth easily. And then we're going to add some geometry to this to create the platform. I'm going to click Add Component. I'm going to make mine a cylinder. And then I'm going to zoom out a little bit and use my scale tool to squash it down and scale it out a little bit. Oops. I'm going to um, make my scale snaps a little finer so I can scale it down and make it a little thinner, like so. And then we could al always put a material on it. I'm just going to search for concrete. You can make this anything you want. Now we need to add a cylinder collision to it. Type in collision. Actually, capsule collision is what I was looking for. Then I'm going to use the scale here to make it bigger. And get my move tool and move it up. You just kind of have to play around with this to get it like you want. And now that we've got that, we're going to add an arrow component. And the arrow will determine which way our character faces. And that's what it looks like. And you can change the color over here in the details panel if you want. You can also scale it however you want to do it. Now let's compile and save. And we're going to now go to the construction script, which is this one here. So let's just move this out of the way a little bit. And let's drag the arrow out into the slate area. We're going to get it. And then we're going to drag off of this one. And you may have to uncheck this box here, context sensitive. And we're going to type in set relative transform. And it's very important that you choose set relative transform. OK, connect these two here. And then we're going to promote this to a variable. And we're going to name this transform location. And with it selected over here in the details panel, it's very important that you click or check this box, instance editable, right here. And that will allow us to actually move the arrow, which is very important. Once that's done, compile and save. Next, let's go to the event graph. Let's just Select all this and delete it. We don't need this. Let's go to the event graph and click the capsule collision. And we're going to type in collision. But before we do, make sure you check this context sensitive box here. Type in collision. And then at the very top, if you scroll up, you will find on component begin overlap. And that's what we want. OK, the next thing we need to add is a set world transform. So right click and type in set world, one word, transform. And you will find it down here if you look for it, set world transform for the arrow. 
And we're actually going to delete that and connect these two here. And then we're also going to connect these two actors here. So come over here to the uh, components list and click the arrow and then right click and type in get world transform. And you will find the get world transform for the arrow. Click it and they should come in connected like that. The next step is to click this uh, return value here, right click on it and split the struct pin. And then you're going to do the same thing for the new transform. And then we're going to connect the rotate the location and the rotation. So what this says so far is that when something overlaps our collision, we're going to be sent to the location of the arrow. Next we need to add a get player character node. Now we need to add an equals node, so pull off of the return value here and type in the equal sign. We want to equal the object. And then we're going to need to switch these up a little bit. Put that one there and put that one there. And now we're going to need a branch statement. If you simply hold down the B key and then double click here, you will get a branch statement. And we need to connect this to this, and this to this. So what we're saying with this statement is if something, this condition, is true or false, do this. If it's true, do this. If it's false, do this. This is sometimes also called a Boolean condition. Okay, now we need to check the character's position and rotation. So on the get player character node here, pull off of the return value and type in get character movement and then do it again and type in get actor rotation and then we need a get player controller node so right click and type in get player controller and then we need to Pull off of the return value and type in set control rotation right here. And so if this is true, we're going to set the control rotation. And then we need to connect the return value here to the new location node here. And now we need to make sure that our character doesn't continue to move when he teleports. So we're going to drag off of the character movement node here and type in set velocity. And then we're going to take this and plug this here off the location. Oops. So when our character teleports, his velocity will automatically be set to zero. Okay, so what we're saying here is if our player overlaps the collision, we're going to put him at the, set his location and rotation in mat to match the arrow component, and we're going to set his velocity to zero. So let's compile and save, go back to our example map, and drag in our blueprint. And when you do that, you will see the components listed right here. If you select the root node up here at the top, this one, and go up to the top, you will see the default values, which are the transform location. And if you move these, you'll move the arrow. And this is how you set the location for your teleport. If you want to teleport objects, then you need to make sure to check this box right here, Generate Overlap Events. So let's see if it works. Yep.
So that's how you make a teleportation blueprint, and I will see you in the next video.